Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. So this video is going to cover the rule changes that MLB is implementing in 2023 and f and beyond, and how it's go how it's affecting the Yankees. How are the Yankees building their team towards these new rule changes? And maybe that could give us an idea of where they're looking at when it comes to the type of player they're looking at for left field, right? Other than the fact that he's left-handed, right? So we did the Kepler video earlier today on why that makes more sense. So. This got me thinking of what maybe we cover about it because we mentioned these new rules in the videos, but we never really dive into them and what they actually mean, right? Some people have covered them. MLB Network has covered them. Um, John Boy covered them at the winter meetings with um, Raul Obanez, and there was another guy that was part of the rules committee. So there's not a lot of people talking about this. So let's. I want to get ahead of the trend because in February, everybody's going to be talking about it. But before I talk about it, make sure you hit the subscribe button. We are on the road to 500. Right, our subscribers have almost tripled since last week. So let's continue the momentum. Tell your friends. Let's build a community. I really do appreciate it. I love interacting with you guys in the comments. Um, so let's continue that growth and continue to talk and get on the same page here. Um, so rule changes. There's four of them. You have defensive shifts. You have uh, the input, the the institution of a pitch clock, bigger bases, and limited pickoff attempts. So. How does this change the game? Now, all four of those rules are made to increase offense and shorten the game, making it shorter while you're there. You know, these three, three and a half, four hour games are dragging on, right? They want to get to three. Uh, the target they said is about three hours. So any, or anything around three hours is acceptable to them because NFL football, football games are three hours, right? Hockey is easy. Hockey is two and a half hours, right? You sit down and watch a Ranger game and it starts at seven. You know, it's going to be over around 930, 945, depending if there's overtime. So... The shift. So the shift is infamous. Everybody knows the shift, right? The 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 second baseman in short right field. Everything. Everybody else shifts over. Usually the third base hole is wide open. And how many times have you said to a left-handed hitter at Yankee Stadium or any stadium you visited, say, hit the ball the other way, put the bunt down, right? But these left-handed hitters constantly pull the ball, constantly, constantly pulling the ball, pulling the ball, pulling the ball, and they're hitting into the shift, right into the teeth of the shift. Um, so that's gonna be no more. Now. There's, there's rules with the infield, but there's no rules with the outfield. So that'll get interesting, right? I'm a fan of this rule. I think this rule is actually going to help the pace of play and help, you know, the excitement of the game because more balls will be put in play. There'll be more hits. There'll be more traffic on the bases. Um, so when you look at it, right, what's your typical major league hitter right now? 230, 240, high, high home run rate, low contact rate, high strikeout rate, right? They're not built like Tony Gwynn anymore. Right, who hit, who struck out a little over 420 times in his career. So, those averages are going to go up. Uh, a guy we could talk about is Rizzo. Rizzo hit 225 last year. I would, I wouldn't be surprised if he's sitting around 250, 255, maybe 260 next year, um, because some of those balls that he put in play that the shift would have taken away would have, will be added to his average and which will help his overall numbers. So that's why I think Kepler is such a interesting choice for the Yankees because analytically, as much as I hate analytics, he fits the bill. And this getting rid of the shift is something that will help his numbers, right? So the shift, the rule change is simple. You have four infielders, all four infielders have to remain on the dirt. So you have your first baseman and your second baseman, they have to stay on the right, the, the right side of second base and the left side of second base is your shortstop and your third baseman. They have to stay there. And what's, other, what's also interesting is that your third baseman, for say, or your second baseman, can't go out and be that fourth outfielder. You know, like you see when you go down and drive by your town park and see old man softball, and they have four outfielders. That's no more, right? So that also will change how the outfield shifts as well. Now, what they're talking about is taking the left fielder and putting him in right, uh, the left fielder and putting him in short right field. We leaving left field wide open, right? That'll be interesting. You'll see more triples and doubles if they decide to go that way, or anything to the, you know, anything to the left side of the center fielder. You're you're off to the races. Um, so that's the shift. Now I'm a fan of this. Like I said, I think that this is going to help. Um, and like I said, it's going to benefit the hitter, which is going to lead to a more con contact based approach, which will limit the strikeouts and will increase the pace of play. Now, sticking on the offensive side of the of the ball, even though all four of these really help the 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 offense, is the bigger bases. So traditionally, the bases are 15 inches. Now they're going to be 18 inches. So that three inches is huge, 
right? How many times have you gone to Yankee Stadium and the guy is out by a spike, right? The length of a spike or by less than half of a step and it's truly bang, bang, right? Having a bigger base is going to lead to more traffic on bases because those plays will go towards the safe call rather than the out call, right? Those bang, bang plays will be more clear that they're safe, right? Also, when you're talking about stolen bases that, you know, the... Everybody has a problem with the oven mitt because it adds an inch. Now you don't have to, <laughs> the oven mitt and the bigger bases add, make it even closer. But those, when they're stealing second base or third base, right? Those bang, bang plays. Now they got a better chance of being safe because the bases are three inches closer to each other, right? So I think this is going to help the pace of play as well. Why? Because more people are going to be safe on the bases. Uh, infielders are going to have to rush their throws. Even though it might not seem like it, they will. That those three inches mean a lot. And which might lead to bad throws or lead to uh, crazy helter stel- helter stelter stuff on the field. So I'm a fan of the bigger bases. I really don't think you know that is going to really change how the field looks. Uh, I really hope they don't do pie slices like they do in the NHL to keep people on the right side of the bags. Um, back to the shift, really quick. I really think that what's going to change it too is that ball up the middle. How many times you see Stanton hit a ball up the middle or or Torres hit a ball up the middle or Judge hit a ball up the middle and it doesn't get through. There's a field that's literally standing right there, right? Now with this rule, unless they anticipate something going up the middle, you know, maybe that ball falls through or gets through and it's a hit, right? So now the other two are, are it limit the pitcher. Now, for those of you who haven't picked up on my background as a, as a ball player and outside of my Yankee fandom is I, I pitched in college. I was a college baseball player. Um, I went to a small division three school. I'm left-handed and I was more, I can't break a pane of glass, but at the same time, I knew how to get people out. Um, I pitched more. I like Tom Glavin and Jamie Moyer. So these pitch rules that they're changing really affects me and how I view the game. Cause I love a good old fashioned pitchers duel. Um, you know, I go back and watch Maddox's starts all the time, Glavin's old starts, you know, Moyer's old starts, you know, just to see how they got hitters out. And it's, it's, it's an art. It really is an art. Um, but first of all, the first thing is, is that there's a pitch clock. So just like there's a shot clock in the NBA, there's a pitch clock. So if there's nobody on base, you have 15 seconds. And if there's somebody on base, you have 20 seconds. Now this just doesn't affect the pitcher, the hitter needs to be in the box, I think, at nine seconds, and the catcher needs to be in the catcher's box at eight seconds, right? And they have to be ready to go under eight seconds. So according to the the, the data they have from the minor leagues, this is going to cut 26 minutes off each game. So it's going to. this is more for the pace of play than to impact offense, but it's more offensive laden if you're thinking of it as a pitcher, right? Because... You know, sometimes as a pitcher, you if you're struggling to find your release point, if you're struggling with your mechanics and you're struggling to find the strike zone, right, you take that little stroll off the mound to kind of recalibrate and recollect yourself and, you know, try to think through your mechanics and say, okay, I know I'm flying open. Let me keep my shoulder closed and let me bend and let me find that release point consistently so I can throw strikes and be effective, right? And when you're limited to 15 seconds, that thought process goes out the window. So you are kind of stuck you know you can't slow the game down and kind of figure it out you know because like I said the pitch the the play starts with the pitcher right and you know you're in control the pitcher's in control and when you take control away from a pitcher you know it's going to lead to poor decision making when it comes to pitch selection it's going to lead to guys not being able to find it relatively quickly you know when it comes to the Yankees I know he's not on the team anymore but Chapman was the king of working slow um, you know, there was, there's paint dry, there's paint that dries faster than how Chapman, how Chapman pitched, uh, in between pitches. You know, there aren't a lot of guys who catch and throw, catch and throw, catch and throw anymore. They, they, they need to hear the pitch calm. They need to talk, you know, remember the other issue before they impl- implemented the mound visit rule was they co- were mound visiting every five seconds, right? So, you know, they implemented that rule and that rule has been seamless, right? The six, six per game, um, that really hasn't really changed much. Um, it's helped, but not in not in the way that they thought it would. Um, but if you violate the pitch clock now, there's a few things that are going to happen. One, if the pitcher does it, it's an automatic ball. And if the hitter does it, it's an automatic strike. 
right? So there's penalties for both players, whether it's the catcher, hitter, or pitcher. Because I think if the catcher violates the law, then, um, or violates the rule, rather, um, it's an automatic ball. Now, this also affects the managers. Now, think of some of the managers in the minor, in the major leagues right now. Are they in shape or out of shape? Because as soon as they leave the dugout, they have 30 seconds to talk to their pitcher and get back off the field to play. Sometimes some of these managers, it takes 30 minutes or 30, or 30 seconds rather, I'm sorry, 30 seconds to get to the mound. That long stroll that they take because they can't walk any faster, Right. So that's going to, you know, they're trying a ton of ways to, to, to quicken the pace of play. And that's what this pitch clock does. That's really all it's for is to change and, and quicken the game. You know, for me, and I, I blame, uh, for this, I blame us as a species. Uh, our, our attention uh, retainment is extremely low. I think it's about eight seconds nowadays. Right, we're, we're we can't hold attention on anything. Everything is instant gratification. Everything it needs to be quick, 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 quick. Right, you can't let watch a game and let it age like a fine wine. Right, everything there needs to be constant stuff in front of you. Right, so that's what the MLB is trying to change. Right, they're trying to make games instead of three thirty or three forty, they're three three and three ten. Right, so there's that. Now the last rule change is the pickoff limit. Again, as a pitcher, I hate this. Now, so each pitcher is limited to two pickoff attempts per batter. So this is also going to increase traffic on the bases. More bases are going to be stolen. More runners are going to be on the move, right? And, you know, maybe teams combat this by pitching out free more frequently. Um, but, you know, again, you're taking control away from the pitcher. And if you throw over more than two times or that third time, if you don't get them, it's a balk. You automatically get second base. Now, these these reset every hitter, and they reset if there is a stolen base, wild pitch, or uh, pass ball. So we're going to see these take effect in spring training, right? So when you start watching the Grapefruit League with the Yankees, you're going to see these changes. Um, it's going to increase the pace of play, which is a positive for some of you. For me, I don't care. Um, it's going to decrease the stagnant periods in between pitches. It's going to create a playing style that plays closer to what we saw 30 years ago. Right? So they're trying to get back to the old traditional way of playing. Right? And so the way to do that is speed up the players. Um, listen, I'm all for going back to traditional baseball. I'm all for high contact guys. I'm all for, you know, putting the ball in play and seeing what happens. You know, there's no defense against a strikeout. Um, but again... You know, I think that these rule changes will mostly have a positive impact on them. You know, the one the the one rule that I hate that's carried over since the pandemic is the ghost runner. That one I can't stand. That reminds me of a tournament in New Jersey on a weekend when you have eighteen uh, high school kids on a ball field trying to get a game in uh, before the next game starts and they're in extra innings. Like that's not what you pay for. You don't pay for a ghost runner. Right. You don't pay for that random guy. You don't. Why? You know that to me, that's stupid. Yes, I know it saves it saves arms and players and things like that. But, you know, it, it, it it's that's not baseball. That's backyard baseball. That's that's not professional baseball. Um, but, you know, and, and not for nothing, there are more changes down in the pipeline. They're looking at automated strike zones, which sounds like a good idea, but I don't think it's going to be as popular as people think because if you look at some of these things that they call strikes you know it looks like an absolute ball because it has late break but it crosses and the catcher looks like a complete fool when he catches it but it's called a strike yeah that's going to be you know there's videos on that uh challenging balls and strikes Dominguez did it himself uh over the course of last year um so you know these rule changes again how and I think they affect the Yankees in a way where you've seen them already make some moves thinking about the changes that are coming, bringing in guys that are more athletic, bringing guys that have more speed, bringing guys in that are, in the end, going to play towards these rules at a better rate. So, you know, I thought this was something that was nice to break down and talk about. Uh, if you're here towards the end of this video, I appreciate you staying for the entire 15 minutes of this video. I know it's one of the longer ones I've posted in a while. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Tell your friends, you know, let's get... 
Let's get a community going. Let's build this community so we can continue to talk baseball. I enjoy talking baseball with you guys and making content for you. So, you know, the least you could do for me is subscribe. It costs you nothing. And with that being said, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Have a nice night.